Stan Gibalisco here. Uh, I have received a couple of questions from a viewer and my answers are, well let me preface my answers by saying that these are my opinions and that in the in the end the only way to really be sure whether an antenna is going to work or not is to try it and see to build the thing and find out because there are a lot of times when an antenna that's not supposed to work and by supposed I mean in theory uh, should not work works fabulously and vice versa antennas that are perfect in every way theoretically and on the air they just don't cut it at all so let me preface all this by saying that there's always exceptions to Stan Gibalisco's great and infinite wisdom. And if you believe that I have great and infinite wisdom, I've got some great oceanfront property for sale in South Dakota, etc., etc. But here is the question. The reader built an antenna, vertical antenna like this, uh, out of wire and wooden rods and various uh, contrivances. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here with these radials. And the radials and the antenna were a quarter of a wavelength long each. So this was a quarter of a wave, and this was a quarter of a wave, this was a quarter of a wave. Your standard ground plane antenna uh, for, I believe it was 20 or well, it was multi-band. He was able to adjust the length of the of the radials and the uh, wire. But his point was, does the height of the antenna, a quarter of a wavelength length, H, have to be exactly a quarter of a wavelength? Can it be a little longer, resulting with in radials that are a little shorter for a total overall length, H plus R, equal to a half a wavelength, but not necessarily feeding it in the center of that half of a wavelength. Can you shorten the radials a bit and lengthen the vertical and still have the thing work or vice versa? Can you make the vertical a little bit too short and the radials a little bit too long and as long as they are add up to a half a wavelength will the thing still work alright? And the answer is of course yes it will because he told me he did it and it worked and yes it will work because this is an unbalanced antenna inherently uh, meaning that it's fed with coaxial cable the center usually going to the vertical part and the braid or shield of the coax going to the radials the dots meaning the shield and the double dots meaning the radiator okay I seem to be having a little bit of spurious dot making frenzy and so I decided to let it go and make some spurious dots like that. Now, suppose that you don't have enough height for whatever reason to get on the frequency you want to get on. Say you have a a 33 foot vertical pole available but you can't get any higher than 33 feet. You can make your radials longer if necessary but um, you can't make your antenna higher than 33 feet. It, can you get away with an inverted L like that? Can you just extend it off in one direction? Well, he did, and of course he got it so that H was equal to a quarter of a wavelength, and R was equal to a quarter of a wavelength as well. More or less, give or take a little bit, because it doesn't have to be in the exact center, you can have more than two radials, of course. You can have four or three or four hundred or a million or five or seven or whatever, however many you want. But what you do is you just trim the, d the length R and the length H such that they're about a quarter of a wavelength each, give or take a little, and such that you get the lowest standing wave ratio at the frequency that you want. On 80 meters, for example, H 
might be equal to about 66 feet and r might also be equal to about 66 feet or maybe a little shorter but you'd have to find out by trimming and experimenting and yes you could make h a little bit long and r a little bit short doesn't have to go in the exact center and you'll still get an antenna that will work. Now there's a limit to how far you can carry that. You can't make R only one foot and H 131 feet or 134 feet or something and expect to get the thing to operate like an antenna on uh, what would that be 80 meters? Um, and so there's there is a limit to how far off center you can place your your feed point and there is a limit to how much of the antenna you can bend off and make horizontal before you lose your vertical uh, polarization characteristic for your antenna but this you might call an inverted l because the radiating part of the antenna is shaped like an upside down L. Okay, now let's see if I can erase the green without erasing the black too. I did it! I did it! I'm great! I'm learning! I'm learning! Okay, as you can see this program uh, is hard to use for me especially after not having used it for so long excuses 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 of course that's a continuous length of wire right there oh it's it heard me it heard me but there you go your inverted L now you can also get rid of the L configuration and use a T configuration instead. Something like that. Here's your height is the well it's it's in effect the total length the total height plus one of the sides and then a little bit less because when you make a T instead of an L this distance right here this L part of the T that L or that L isn't going to be exactly a quarter of a wavelength it's going to be a little bit shorter than that for resonance with quarter wavelength radials Gee, things just reappear like magic. Oh, I'm f wrestling. Can you see me on the floor wrestling with this uh, computer as I make this? You know, thrashing around and all of that sort of thing. No? Well, that's, what's I that's what I'm doing. How it's coming out, I have no clue. But, continuing on as I yammer and complain about my program I wish I you know what I wish I could do is just make a whole wall as a whiteboard and put a real high resolution camera there and stand there like Professor Gibalisco and give a, an old time lecture uh, standing like a professor in front of a class and just do away with all of this fancy software I, you know, but of course that's not sexy enough for to please most uh, uh, publishers of videos. But the readers, I, I think, as long as they get the message, the viewers and the readers, they don't care, do you? Uh, do they? Do you? Do I? So here we go, an inverted T antenna. The main objective is to get vertical polarization maybe an eighth of a wavelength here and a little less than an eighth of a wavelength for each of these branches leads to a total of a fourth of a wavelength antenna high and then of course the radius of each radial 
should also be about a quarter of a wavelength. And I say about or approximately because, again, you need to trim your antenna so that the minimum SWR occurs at the frequency where you want to operate. And as long as that minimum SWR is 2 to 1 or less, it doesn't have to be a perfect match. 2 to 1 or less, as long as your SWR at the frequency of operation is less than or equal to 2 to 1, then for all intents and purposes, your antenna is uh, operates every bit as well as a perfectly matched antenna would do. The loss, the in additional loss introduced by this standing wave ratio is negligible. And in some cases it can be much higher than 2 to 1 if you have a low loss feed line. Um, and I've, sometimes you can just go ahead and defy all the rules and you've, your SWR is 7 to 1. The thing isn't even resonant. Your radials are just hodgepodge of of grounded objects, and you just run a f piece of coax to it and run it to a transmatch and tune it to get a perfect match and at the transmitter, even though the antenna itself is way off off kilter. And you get on the air and you send CQ and some rare DX comes back to you. I know because I've had that happen, and my antenna on my deck, which I use as my main antenna, my only antenna, has, uh, I've done it with that antenna, I've done it with mobile antennas in big number eight, if you care to watch the videos in my uh, playlist about um, ham radio on the road, I forget the exact title of the playlist now too, but you'll find it, it's it, it's about going to Wyoming three or four years ago in my trusty old truck big number eight which I had to sell because I could not comprehend how to use programs like this and the doctors diagnosed me as demented <coughs> and charged me ten thousand dollars per visit which was low by by their standards but high by mine and it cost me that truck anyway enough yammering about this I hope you get the gist of this is that you can have an inverted T antenna like that to make it shorter if your height is limited and you don't have to feed it in the electrical center of its uh, of its circuit it can be a little off-center, it can be a little asymmetrical, and it'll still operate perfectly well with a coaxial cable feed line. With an unbalanced feed line, meaning, of course, grounded shield and the center conductor going to the radiating element, grounded radials grounded meaning connected to the ground they can be laying on the ground they can be above the ground or they can be buried it's best the best deal of all is if you can get them up pretty high away from the ground so I hope that these yammerings of mine make a little sense to you along with all my other uh, various irrelevancies and complaints and, but um, Again, what I'd really love to do is, is the old Stan Gibalisco, the absent-minded professor. You can clearly tell I'm absent-minded. And as far as professor goes, uh, I call myself that just be for fun. Professor Gibalisco, signing off. Proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, saying... 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which, in my native CW fist, shall forever after sound as de-de-da-da-da. De, de, de,